because we don't seem to have touched on that. <laughs> I rise to share the very deep concerns of Green parties around these islands um, about the issues that we've been discussing today. Um, like people, like member, members from all corners of your Lordship's chamber, um, Green parties would like to see this bill thrown out altogether. Although I think the proposal that we just heard from the noble Lord, Lord Cormac, about the idea of a pause and a chance to think and understand is at least a, a positive alternative that your Lordship's House really should think about considering. Um, and I think um, the noble Lord, Lord Wilson, has given us, we've had lots of metaphors. I'm imagining the fudge you know, that you've unwisely packed in your suitcase and flown back from a hot place and is dripping out all over everything and the mess is everywhere. Possibly that's a useful metaphor for where this bill's put us. But I want to start by putting on the record um, a highly unusual and I think important letter, the joint letter that was written to the Financial Times on the 28th of November by the Cabinet Secretary of the Constitution of the Scottish Government and the Council General and Minister for the Constitution from the Welsh Government. And in small part that said, quote, the bill allows UK ministers to take decisions in policy areas that are devolved to the Welsh Senate and the Scottish Parliament and to do so without consultation or the need for their consent. Close quotes. That's essentially what we've been talking about here today. And I think there's been a point implicit in our debate that hasn't perhaps been made explicitly. And I'm drawing here particularly on the work of Dr Vivian Gravy from Queen's University, Belfast. He points out that the laws have been transposed into the nations of these islands in different ways. So we just have a huge diversity. And one of the points of that means that the devolved nations are not really able to help each other out. One of the natural situations would be the issues of resources that the Labour Lord Lord Thomas raised. Ideally, people would be helping each other out and work cooperatively, but in most cases that's not going to work in this situation because each nation is different. And I just want to very briefly highlight some of the ways in which the nations are different. I think in terms of Wales, we haven't had much discussion, but there's huge impact of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. And that has to be considered in the context of this bill of the um, no increase in regulatory burden. No increase in regulatory burden and the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act are profoundly contradictory. And I do not see any way of resolving that contradiction. In terms of Northern Ireland, um, many people with vastly more knowledge than I, the noble lady Baroness Ritchie and others, um, have uh, commented on that. But I just saw some figures that I thought were really telling. Um, up until autumn, when the caretaker ministers um, ceased to hold, hold office, the Department for Infrastructure had identified 500 rules and regulations. The Department for Agricultural and Rural Development had identified 600 rules and regulations. And that has been described by experts as the tip of the iceberg. And of all of the issues that Northern Ireland needs to deal with, to dump that on them as well is simply unacceptable. And that's why I think in the context of this group of amendments, the noble lady Baroness Humphreys and others amendment 29 at least takes us to the core of the issues that we need to address. In terms of Scotland, the noble lady Mar Baroness McIntosh of Pickering has already covered the, a great deal of this, but just to mention some conclusions from the Scottish Human Rights Commission, um, which said that this would create incredible legal uncertainty about human rights, the ability to deliver those human rights and really difficult to enforce those rights if this bill goes through in its current form. So I think, again, the noble Lord, Lord Cormac, made an important point about the tone and the direction of travel here. We have just seen with the Windsor Agreement a significant reset in our approach to the relationship with, the, with Brussels. The tone, the approach has changed in a positive manner. What I would suggest is that we need to see a similar change in tone and approach between Westminster, where we have, under previous Prime Ministers, seen an extremely aggressive um, and cooperative approach towards the nations of these islands. We need to see a different kind of tone, a different kind of approach in these not very united kingdom. Um, and dealing with this bill stopping it, pausing it, or at least implementing something like uh, Amendment 29, really is absolutely essential. 